Thank you for joining me today for the special edition of Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas. I hope you saw my recent video about petrified wood. The pieces that are working as paperweights on this poster in the four corners here are all petrified wood from the Crater Diamond State Park. Uh, this is not petrified wood and we're going to talk about it in just a minute. Um, it, it looks similar, you know, the color and all. Petrified wood is mineral replaced. In other words, this used to be wood and minerals seeped in the silica and replaced it and made an exact replica of the wood that used to occupy that space. Uh, and these are some pretty cool specimens. And this, I mean, you can really tell that looks like wood and it's still got some lamprite on it. I didn't clean it up because I want people to see that came right out of the volcanic ore that brought the diamonds to the surface. Well, <clears throat> this stuff, believe it or not, is 100 million year old wood. It's not petrified wood. It's not mineral replaced. This is wood that will burn in a fireplace or in a campsite may not smell too good because there's sulfur in it see the yellow but that is wood old wood and you think how do you get it and why has it not rotted over a hundred million years you know i'm not buying this story yet until you explain it well give me just a minute and i will explain it so what happened was <clears throat> When, okay, there was a shallow sea here and along the shoreline or maybe in the water, there were trees growing a hundred million years ago. And some of them were growing, some of them had rotted and fallen over or a storm had knocked them down. So some, some were like logs floating in the shallow sea and some were trees standing in the shallow sea or along the shore of the shallow sea. This was all found at the American Mine, which is one of the seven known diamondiferous intrusions within three miles of the Crater of Diamond State Park. So we were digging in solid lamperite with an excavator. I'll show you a picture here <laughs> in a minute. We'll zoom in on this poster. This explains about it. We were digging with an excavator and tore into something that we thought it was a vein of gold it sparkling everywhere we thought man we we're rich we hit the mother load actually it looked a lot like pyrite when we got to looking at it closer but it was marcasite now marcasite and pyrite are very similar um, one main difference to me is uh, pyrite you you can have it on your shelf for 50 years and it'll still look like pyrite like the day you bought it or found it um, marcasite you leave it out for a few months and it turns to a white powdery dust and blows away it's no longer shiny it no longer looks like gold or pyrite uh, anyway that marcasite was coating a log I mean a tree log of uh, carbonized wood it's also called a colified tree and what happened was these trees were just either uh, floating in the water or standing up growing when there was earthquake faulting and a volcano blew molten hot lava to the surface at the speed of Mach 2 so uh, twice the speed of sound kaboom here comes all this molten rock liquid rock red hot rock hitting a shallow sea and there was quite a steam explosion when you think something that hot hits water pow uh bet that made some noise anyway it blew trees and water and rock and volcanic material into the air and the trees were burning because it was liquid hot molten rock and then it all fell back down in and this wood was smothered and you can only have a fire if you have three elements fuel which is wood heat 
provided by the volcano and oxygen. Well, if you lose any of those three, you don't have a fire anymore. Well, once that volcanic material all came back down and smothered these rocks, it blocked the oxygen. It also entombed it in a solid rock, volcanic rock, known as lamprite. So this did not rot because it did not have exposure to air or water. It was entombed in solid rock until we came along with an excavator and started digging it up. And on the outside of that wood, marcasite had grown, which is like pyrite, iron pyrite. Um, and uh, there's some sulfur in marcasite, and you can see the yellow sulfur on this wood. That's a beautiful piece of wood. And you can tell the difference because this is dense, this is heavy, this feels light like a piece of wood. You know, you can recognize it real easy because it looks like charred wood. But this is very, very old. And I was fascinated when we dug this up and I thought I have got to learn more about this. So I got on the internet and I checked universities to see if there were professors who specialize in old ancient wood and would you like me to mail some of this to you and would you study it and you know are you interested well I wrote to a whole bunch of professors at a whole bunch of universities all across this nation and I heard back from some of them they said yes that's what I do for a living I study old wood <laughs> I would love to see some of that and so I sent them some and <clears throat> I also took some to the University of Arkansas in Little Rock and Professor uh, Don Owens and Stephen Leslie were excited about it and said, oh, we want to do a uh, poster article about that for a convention we have coming up with the GSA. So they created this poster. We kind of wrote an article together with me furnishing photos, information about where and when we dug it up, and furnishing them with the samples. They decided that by studying this wood, it was laterally compressed, and so this stuff was not a living tree at the time of the intrusion, but it was a tree that had fallen over, kind of like a log jam in a river. It was a log jam in a, a bay of of uh, a shallow sea and uh, other professors I sent it to like at the uh, uh, University in uh, Louisiana um, he said that oh no it, uh, it was a living tree uh, it's not laterally compressed well so the experts didn't agree but what could have been <laughs> I sent different specimens to different professors so maybe one got a specimen of a tree that was living at the time the others looked at specimens of trees that were laying down at the time but no matter um, I want to show you this poster a little bit and, and talk to you about um, what what they discovered and show you some of the pictures on this but I, I want to show you this is the first piece of carbonized wood I found at the Worthington diamond mine uh, we've been mining up there looking for diamonds for a few months in fact this is our diamond recovery plant it's sitting quiet right now we ran it this morning uh, ran uh, four tons of material through it in an hour but um, this is a uh, colified tree from from the Worthington mine. Now, the rest of this is like from Black Lick and the American. So this poster, the title is Colified Tree Xenoliths Within the Cretaceous American Black Lick Lamperite Southwestern Arkansas. Now, let me tell you, I was not the one that wrote that title. That was the doctors of geology, the professors that came up with that. So. What is a colified tree? Well, that's not too hard to figure. It's a tree that was pretty much turned to coal. What is a xenolith? It is just a component inside of volcanic ore that wasn't originally a part of that volcanic ore. In other words, it was grabbed on the way up. You can have uh, xenoliths like, oh, Trinity clay or, or other country rock caught up in your lamp, right, that get, gets mixed up in it because volcanoes are messy stuff. 
But uh, let me show you a picture. This is a... Uh, I got a tripod here, excuse me. This is a much younger man. I don't know if you recognize him, but he is holding specimens. Uh, in fact, this, <laughs> this very uh, colified tree xenolith, uh, the carbonized wood, when it was found. So uh, I'm, I'm holding it way back then and it has since fallen apart. Um, here is a piece, Scott Graves. I was working with him in diamond recovery. Uh, he's standing there with a huge piece of the colified tree, carbonized wood, and you can see a picture of it in the back uh, of another one in the back of his pickup truck. You can tell by the wheel well how, how big that was. Uh, this is a map showing the uh, Crater of Diamond State Park, Twin Knobs 1, Twin Knobs 2, the Timberlands, Black Lick American. This is where we found it at the Black Lick American uh, site. And then there's the Kimberlite Mine. But uh, it's in orange showing that that is where we found it. And here we are excavating. In fact, I was there on uh, September 11th when the attacks on the Twin Towers occurred. Uh, I took these photos of what we were doing that day and I was driving the dump truck hauling the ore out and uh, this was at the American Mine and this is where we found the tree xenoliths. So anyway, uh, the difference is this would not burn because it's a rock, it's mineral replaced and that is petrified wood. This is carbonized wood. It's still wood and has wood fibers. It's not mineral replaced. Um, this is still burnable and uh, very, very old. I, I thought you might find that kind of neat. I did. Thank you for joining me for this latest edition of Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas.